Hello, I am AxelMC131, and welcome back to Behind the Blocks in Minecraft 1.11. And I've got another fabulous uh, redstone creation for you today, and uh, this one... This is actually my first attempt at a slime block flying machine, and uh, this one's quite special for a number of reasons, and I will show you why. Now, first of all, I would have liked to be able to cr claim credit for creating this as a really, really small and compact flying machine. It is a six-block flying machine, two sticky pistons, two slime blocks, and two observer blocks. But sadly, I uh, after I uh, um, created it, um, after messing around for a bit, I went on the YouTubes and then discovered that someone else had come up with a very similar one previously, only, and they'd only actually posted a video on it about three weeks ago. And that's someone called Aussie33, who I'd never actually heard of before, but I will have a link to their um, video. And there's a slightly actually a different version to this, which I uh, which is probably the only reason that I'm still doing a video on this, um, and as work in different ways. Um, so Aussies is a uh, bi-directional one which can be made to carry on in one direction horizontally or vertically. This one I have not tried vertically yet, but this one is a dual direction um, slime block flying machine, in that it will go on in one direction until it hits something, and then it can be reactivated and go back the other way, and it can do this endlessly. So I've created what is effectively a little f a flying machine station where you can jump on at one end, get off at the other, and then come back and go back the other way. And I will show you how this works um, right away. So you can see that this is actually the flying machine itself. You can you can kind of see how it's compressed in here. So there's an observer block there, and a sli two slime blocks, two pistons, another observer block there. And to activate it, all I've got to do is walk onto this plate here, and just keep walking. And as you can see, it's just going to shunt itself across to the other side, and I'm just holding the, the W key here and keep walking forwards, and it comes to the other side. And then at the other side, I've just got the identical setup, but because this is just perfectly flipped, it'll do exactly the same thing in the other direction. Pretty neat, huh? So I'll just pop in, I'll just do that again, pop into third person so you can actually see what's happening. If you can't tell, by the way, this is actually a redstone lamp underneath this pressure plate. So when I actually stand on it, the lamp turns on, and that is um, a block update which is detected by the observer block, which is facing outwards, by the way. But we'll get into more details of that when it comes to the tutorial. So from here, if I just walk on and keep walking, you'll be able to see how it actually keeps me on. Every time the slime block is moved forwards, it lets me speed up a tiny, tiny bit, but while the slime block's under my feet, it slows me down and means that I can't actually walk off the edge of it. So it's kind of neat that you can actually do that. I have tried experimenting with having, like, uh, another block. Like, you can do a setup where you have, say, um, some stairs there, and you can kind of stand there, and it'll push you across. Uh, and you can have that in both directions. But I have discovered, be warned, I have discovered... Um, Phantom block creation occurs if you have any blocks attached to these slime blocks. So um, this is, uh, in my opinion at least, the safest uh, glitchless way to do it. Uh, and it seems to work flawlessly so far. I've been, I've had one of these that I've just run back and forth, you know, several dozen times, and it's worked perfectly every time. But uh, that is how it actually works. So you can kind of see how it's actually operating if I just activate it again. So you can see the redstone lamp there, which then turns itself off. And you can see it's just like these two little three-block sections which push each other and pull each other as they go until they hit a furnace, which of course can't be moved by pistons, so they stop. And it just resets itself and can then be reactivated. So that is how it actually works, and now I'm going to show you how to build one yourself. Okay, so this is the uh, area that I've set up, and basically the way that this works is you've got, uh, at either end of this thing's run, you're going to have a funny little station. And I'm going to show you how to build that um, um, first. So we're going to build a little berthing station, basically, for these machines. So, um, depending on what you want to build it out of is completely up to you. For the moment, I've been using cobblestone and polished andesite, just because it makes a nice little frame look. Um, but we're going to get the important blocks, which is a furnace, or any other block that um, cannot be moved. Um, I prefer to use furnaces than obsidian or pumpkins or something, because it just looks um, a little nicer with a stone setup, and you can see it kind of blends in with the rest of the machine there, uh, and I think it actually looks a little nicer. So we're going to start by cutting out a little L shape here. Now, this you want to keep in mind that uh, you're going to replicate this at the other end. It's not mirrored. It is actually rotated. So you need to keep in mind that it's going to have to fit into the same slot facing that way or that way. Does that make sense? Kind of. Probably not. I'll explain why when we get to that, but for the moment, this is, we're going to cut out this little three-block L-shaped area. We're going to put one for the furnace in the corner there, 
right? And this is the basically the buffer. This is going to stop it from moving any further. And then I'm going to put the uh, redstone lamp there and the pressure plate on top of it. So now when you stand on this pressure plate, redstone lamp will turn on. Whoops. And the uh, end observer block is going to slot into here. Now we're going to just go and replicate this on the other side. So now I'm going to show you what I mean by not flipping it. So if I was going to mirror this, so I make just a dotted line across here, and I would make this on this side, redstone lamp there and furnace here, that's wrong, okay? <laughs> Don't do that. It needs to be the same way. So if you come over here and you've got furnace on the right, redstone lamp on the left, then when you fly over here, you want to have furnace on the right, redstone lamp on the left, okay? Keep that in mind, very important. We're going to stick our pressure plate there, and now this one should activate as well, of course. So that's our um, buffer systems at either end and the activation. And now we're just going to run back over here, and we're going to shove those back in. And we're going to grab the blocks to actually make the uh, flying machine with. And that's literally it. It's two observer blocks, two slime blocks, and two sticky pistons. So even for survival, this is fa probably fairly practical. Um, so I think I might have a go at building one of these in survival next. But uh, I'll show you how to do it. Now, I don't know uh, how experienced um, you, you viewers all are with... Um, slime block flying machines using observer blocks, but one thing that I've learnt in my tinkering with them recently is um, if you're building a machine with observer blocks to power it, put them down first before anything else, because otherwise when you place an observer block it'll start activating things and you end up breaking the system. Now the other thing to remember is observer blocks of course when you place them, they are looking at the block pointing away from you, and the redstone pulse is going to face towards you when you place them like that. So I'm going to place it, you're going to place the first one just in this slot here that we've left between the furnace and the uh, redstone lamp, facing at the redstone lamp. And what it's going to do is that when you activate that, it'll, um, it'll activate a pulse out of the observer block. And we can test this with a fishing rod. Observe. You can see it actually activates when it turns on and off. Cool. So now we're just going to take uh, two blocks back from there, and then a block across, and we're actually going to make a little, whoops, a little space there, and we're going to put the other observer facing the other way, right there, so you can see that there, and we've got a two block gap between them, and they're staggered by one, and facing in opposite directions, so you can see the little face is pointing out in the direction it's going to go, so that's the leading observer block, and now what we're going to do is we're going to take our slime blocks, we're going to put one behind each um, output for each of the observer blocks, and then we're going to take two sticky pistons and place place them on the sides of each of those slime blocks facing into the other slime block. So you can see we're going to make this little square thing here. There we go. And that's literally it. That is all you need. So if we just shove everything back in there, all you have to do now to activate it is stand on the pressure plate, or if you want to have a different setup for activating it, then however you're going to activate it, and just keep walking. So again, trust me, it works. Just hold W. Don't sprint, don't hold shift, just hold W and it works. And you could extend that path for as long as you wanted, as long as you have a duplicate station at the other end where you can um, get off and then once you want to come back the other way, walk back on and it reactivates. And it's as simple as that. Even even I'm horrified at how simple this is. Like this is this is like the stuff of like Doom machines, you know, when they're <laughs> super powerful creations, this simple, but, you know. <laughs> so, uh, yes, uh, that is all I have for you guys today, though, so I hope that you've enjoyed, and I hope that you will find practical uses for this. I'm thinking very hard about some of them, uh, especially on the Salty Dog server. I might have to try and implement one of these somewhere, maybe for, like, crossing a ravine or something, you know, just to show off, because everyone loves to show off with redstone. It's, it's one of the best things we have in Minecraft to show off with, with the exception of enchanted diamond armor, but <laughs> those of us who suck at combat will go for the redstone line. But yes, that is all I have for you guys today, so I hope you have enjoyed. If you liked, please leave a like. If you want to see more, then subscribe and stay tuned, and direct all thoughts, questions, and feedback to the comments below. And yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching. I've been MC 131 and I'll see you next time.